You're listening to Jones's Jukebox on KLOS. That was Hawkwind, Silver, Mas- Silver Machine. Then we had Hendrix, Long Hot Summer Night. Here with my guest, Phil Collin. How are you, buddy? I'm all right. I'm contact eye from that last song, though. Yeah. Yeah. I started tripping a little I bit. I did a bit, yeah. The LSD was just soup seeping out of the speakers. <laughs> um, so, um, what was I going to tell Something I was going to ask you. Oh, man. We're playing on an album together. We are. Yeah. Mr. Paul Cook. Indeed. And if you're listening, Paul and Jenny, hello. But hello. Yes, yeah, we are. The New Professionals album. Yeah. And they're doing a gig uh, in Blackpool, some punk festival soon, I think. Should that be yeah. Anywhere? Where did you do it? Where did you do your overdubs at your I, house? Yeah, done it at home. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me, I did it, and Billy Duffy did some. Yeah. And uh, I haven't heard any yet, but I only heard when I was doing it. Mick Jones is on it as well, apparently. Yeah. I think so. Apparently it was a nightmare with him. <laughs> did you hear that? <laughs> a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm dying to hear it, the whole thing, <laughs> especially that. Yeah, I want to hear what he did. <laughs> yeah. Because Cookie was like, oh, man. I guess, yeah. you I guess you don't play too much these days. That's it, getting him to get him to do it, right? But No, it sounds great. I'll it's good have him on, uh, having him on there, Mick, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Do you do you practice a lot? I play a lot, but I don't really practice. I, yeah. I've, like, I've got a guitar and a tour. I mean, really, I've one there all the time. You, know, you get carried away. And it's like just there. I have them laying all over the place, so I'm always picking them up and just yeah, yeah. Do you ever learn anything new? I do, and I you know it's like uh, around other people you see them doing this thing. Um, I just did this thing up in Monterey with Joe Satriani and yeah. What was that? What was that? It was great. It's called G4, and they have a, it's a guitar camp, like they're a clinic the, kind of, but it like all, like kids from like 12 to like people of 70, and they're asking you about guitar stuff. But have you heard Tommy Emmanuel? From Australia. No. Check him out on you. He's Australian. He's, he's an acoustic player, and he's always like goofing around. But it'll be rockabilly, jazz. He's, he's the most amazing guitar player. Yeah. Anyway, he was up there as well. Yeah. So just watching everyone do their thing, and actually hearing everyone talk was actually really interesting. I was still learning a hell of a lot. So yeah. it was, it's great, you know. Did you do any jam in volume? Guys? I did. Yeah. It was like, and Ele- that was great. electric. Yeah. Yeah. You had a drummer and stuff. Oh yeah, it was great. Great, really, really good uh, bass player and drummer, yeah, Craig Martini. And, and, uh, and full of, of a room of people yeah. who had signed up to go and do it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, so you know, everyone's playing. And it wasn't, no, there's no big heads or egos on it. It was amazing, just great yeah. playing. And, yeah. And learning a lot, you know, I, I got a lot out of it, actually, just by being up there. Um, now, was there, like, young kids? Yeah, there was a couple of kids that were 12, and, and they were... You know, they just want they want to talk about the experience of, um, you know, I was saying about confidence and stuff, yeah. and and, and how, how you can blow it all with the ego and big headedness and all yeah. that, and and just approaching it from a different thing, just to build your own confidence. And guitar players are weird in general because they they're they're a funny breed. Yeah. And I'm saying to everyone, you should sing and, and don't care if it, if you mess it up because like, Jimi Hendrix never cared. And and it was brilliant. And he hated his own. He didn't voice. didn't like his voice. Did no, he? no. But I love his voice. Great voice. Was, yeah. And he, he was just trying to uh, get it out. I think that's the thing, huh? I, I'm sure he was trying to get it out. That's right, get it in. I heard he got it out a lot. <laughs> Apparently. Mr. Hendricks. <laughs> 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 um, but he... he uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? He got it out and then he... Uh, Set fire used, it, used it as a slide. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You ever heard... <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. No, I don't. But yeah, amazing. Um, he didn't like his voice, but what's great about his voice is you know it's in when you hear it. Without a that, doubt. To me, that's the same as guitar players. Yeah, I think so. When you put that down, sound it don't matter if you're technically great or not. You know when you hear someone, I think that's a a gift that you you get that if if you can. Hear someone sing. I I agree. I, I, this is funny, and I actually mentioned I've t- may have told you before that. They said, what's the best sound you've heard? The best live sound I've heard, and I've told you, is you. I heard you playing live, and Steve Stevens from Billy Idol. They're two gigs, and I've seen everyone play. Yeah. But I've, I'm, if I remember right, you was borrowing a, a, an amp off Billy Duffy, I, and we weren't even your own gear, and you was playing, it was a little club. I think it was here, it was like uh, the Roxy or something. Was this that Camp Freddy stuff? No, this was, it was a pistol show. Oh. Yeah. It was a few years ago. 
And it was either Roxy or a whiskey. One of them. Roxy. Yeah, it was 2008. Amazing, just yeah. the sound, and and you can tell it's you straight off the bat. It's like, yeah. Yeah. and that's that's what you try and achieve is like individuality and kind of yeah. your thing. You I'm know? limited. I'm I'm a lim- don't, limited. Don't matter, does it? We all are. Man. You know, it's like it's it's you do your thing, uh, and yeah. that's the important. Thing. Back to the Hendrix thing, you hear him in, in a second, and it's him expressing. So even when he makes a balls up, yeah, you know it's going to be followed by something profound because he tried to do something. Profound in the first place, and you know it's, that take that does take some courage. You know, it's like not not to worry about it. He learned at an early age, though, didn't he? He yeah. did. I, I was late. Was, was you late? What well, late? <laughs> like three months before our first gig. <laughs> really? I was like nineteen. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I was sixteen. So yeah. I, was, I I saw that Deep Purple gig up when I was fourteen, and pestered me mum and dad. And did then, that change everything? That was it, the first gig you yeah, went to see. Deep totally Purple. Totally changed it. Yeah. Like. It, it, Front row and Richie Blackmore smashing up the strap, but even what he was playing, it was so aggressive yeah. and and expressive and all that, and and that that ch- changed my life actually. Yeah, yeah. That was the that was the thing that said, okay, that's what I got to do. Yeah. What about you? What, what? I, I was in a proof school, right? And and watching what we were just talking about, Roxy yeah. music, doing Virginia Plain. Right. Yeah. That was it. I'm like, I got to have some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Just the the the, the glam, the avant gardeness of it all. Absolutely. And that sound. It was just like, and, and here I am in a, in a proof school because I couldn't stop nicking. Right. But then I had that epiphany of like, I've got to get out of here and, and, and get serious. So I, so I got out and nicked a bunch of musical equipment. <laughs> but you're serious about it, like with the state, serious with oh, the stadium. Yeah. So it's all right. Oh, yeah. I weren't messing right. about. Yeah. Wow. That's, so that's great, it. isn't it? Yeah. No, it's, it's great. And, and just that, that whole experience from. Yeah, when when you see something like that, that's totally life changing. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I think you, you talk to most musicians, and they'll always say a moment. It was this moment, right, when it all changed. Yeah, you know, um, this this album. So it's live. Was he still um, around producing it? Oh, um, Matt Lang. Yeah, not on the live album. No, this is this is just us from from a concert. I think it was two thousand eleven. Oh, I, th- I think. From that, and unless it's something from that, you, yeah, it's what? From the, oh, it is from that. Bonus okay, disc. okay, it's the bonus. So this was actually 1987 or 88. Okay, um, at either McNichols Arena or we got some other stuff in in Atlanta. But uh, yeah, it was the 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 tour that followed that album. So yeah. yeah, it was pretty bonkers. When you was in the studio with him before you had success, and he and he became become the producer, is he like he's like a really makes you work that guy right but only because he makes you want to work that's the difference he weren't like a yeah a bit of a yeah an asshole. he was actually like really it, he would inspire you to so everyone goes oh he's he, he's a taskmaster it wasn't that he would actually inspire you to to want to do something he'd go like that's not strong enough or we could get a way better chorus or save that for your solo album yeah or, you know he definitely uh, got an ear yeah oh it's amazing i mean he, amazing what he did f- with you guys yeah, incredible do you yeah. give him a lot of credit i do all the time because we wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for him yeah i mean he he came up with a lot of the songs and the concept of it you know yeah. he said well, you can be like everyone else everyone's trying to copy your last album or we can do something a bit more serious and you bring in different influences you know it's Frankie goes to Hollywood and Duran Duran, Prince. You know, there's a lot of stuff happening around there. Yeah. And we embrace that instead of just being like a rock band. Another, you know? another, yeah. yeah, churn it out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, let's play a track. This is a live Pour Some Sugar On Me from the 30th Anniversary Deluxe Edition of Asteria. We're here with Phil Collin. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Cal OS. <laughs> 